do hard stuff. In this video, I've researched five active, challenging, interesting jobs that require no college degree and have good to excellent earning potential. And I have personal experience with three of these jobs. This list is for folks looking for hard, rewarding, sometimes physical work where we can work long hours outside with our hands, sometimes in extreme conditions. The kind of work that makes us feel like we've accomplished something. Oh, and by the way, no reason you can't mix and match some of these jobs. Let's jump right in. Number five, hunting guide. If you're passionate about hunting or the outdoors, you can turn your devotion to the outdoors into a rewarding lifelong career. Hunting is deeply rooted in our global history as humans and remains one of the most popular outdoor pastimes in North America. Hunters provide numerous benefits to the ecosystem, ranging from conservation to wildlife population control. Money generated from license fees and excise taxes on guns, ammunition, and angling equipment provide about 60% of the funding for state wildlife agencies, which manage most of the wildlife in the US. Hunting has been incredibly successful at restoring the populations of North American game animals, some of which were once hunted nearly to extinction. Hunting enthusiasts will travel the world and spend very large sums of money to explore new hunting environments and new game opportunities. And often they will spend years honing their skills in hunting only one species of animal. For example, while most of my hunter friends will hunt many different species through the year, some consider themselves to be whitetail hunters or turkey hunters. They will seek the best examples of a species and try to increase the hunting challenge. Bow hunting giant Kansas whitetails, for example, it's not easy no matter how much a guy spends on camo and a nice bow. And they will look for guides and outfitters who can provide them with access and intel to exclusive or remote land where these elusive critters live. A typical day in the life of a hunting guide includes scouting and patterning animals to learn their habits and travel patterns, cleaning and maintaining the hunting lodge, guide trucks and gear and equipment, cooking good meals for the guests, taking hunters out into the hunting grounds and providing them with intel on the species that they're hunting, collecting harvested animals from the field and dressing them, and in many cases, preparing meat and trophies for the trip home. Of course, it's up to the hunter to close the deal, and he or she has to exercise scent control. They have to be quiet and still, and they have to know their weapon and their limitations with it so that they can make an ethical kill. What can a guide make? According to many websites, guides can earn up to $2,500 a month in base and tips and have their room and board paid for. However, in my experience as a whitetail guide and an exclusive hunting outfitter, you can make a lot more than that if you provide outstanding service to your guests every week. The work is seasonal, of course, but it can be an excellent complement to some of the other work on this list that is also seasonal. Number four, wildland firefighter. And this is an excerpt from a BLM fire position announcement. The work is primarily performed in forest and range environments in steep terrain where surfaces may be extremely uneven, rocky, covered with vegetation, and in smoky conditions. Temperatures vary from above 100 degrees Fahrenheit to below freezing. Risks include smoke inhalation, fire entrapment, snake or insect bites and stings, exposure to excessive machinery noise, and falling and rolling materials. In the 21st century, the cost of fighting wildfires in the U.S. has gone from about 15% of the Forest Service's annual budget to 55%. In recent years, there have been more frequent and devastating wildfires because of a number of factors, including several years of relative drought, inconsistent forest management leading to large accumulations of fuel, and more homes being built in or near forest land. Wildland firefighter roles include hand crews who create fire lines and saw lines in attempts to stop a fire's advance. Hell attack crews. Hell attack crews are usually used for initial attack on fires that are difficult for other firefighters to access or on extended fires that require aerial support in the form of water drops, cargo delivery, crew shuttling, or reconnaissance. A typical initial attack response by a hell attack crew involves flying to the fire via helicopter and spending one to three days although sometimes much longer, putting the fire out before hiking to the nearest road for a pickup. There's smoke jumpers. Smoke jumpers are highly skilled firefighters, especially trained in wildfire suppression tactics. They parachute into remote areas from aircraft to combat wildfires and are, are equipped to work in remote areas for extended periods of time with little logistical support. Repellers, a highly effective way to fight wilderness fire when no roads are nearby is to have wildland firefighters 
repel from a helicopter. These firefighters then take suppressive action on the fire or clear a safe landing zone to receive additional firefighters if the fire is too large. Wildland firefighters use all kinds of tools, vehicles, and aircraft to fight wildfires. Everything from chainsaws, torches, and shovels to buggies, trucks, tankers, and large heavy equipment like bulldozers, tractor plows, and masticators, which are machines for chewing up brush and small trees. And up in the sky, we've got air tankers, helicopters, and smoke jumper transport aircraft. After you've gained experience and skills, you can start earning decent money in wildland firefighting with some hazard pay for certain roles. Potential earning, you're probably not gonna get rich as a wildland firefighter, but that's not what this job is really about. Number three, small business owner. Why is small business owner on this list? Any enterprising person can do some serious research, find a need, and create a business around that need. The US economy is built in garages and on kitchen tables by men and women who have an idea or a dream that could change the lives of others for the better or even change the world. A big part of a rewarding job is doing work that has feedback for successes and for mistakes. Building a business involves not just knowing your product or service, it requires learning entirely new skills from bookkeeping, marketing, time management, and outsourcing, just to name a few. But bringing a product or service into the market, a product or service that provides a lot of value to customers, it's hard work, can take years to craft and build, and carries out very high risk for failure. But it also brings a very high chance for high reward. Adjuster TV is a small business now, and besides my work as a catastrophe adjuster, this is the most rewarding and fun work that I've ever done. It's also been extremely stressful and challenging to build this thing from scratch. The risk is high, but in learning what our viewers really need to help them do well as adjusters gives us the fuel we need to adapt and improve and push through the slow times. Building something that provides value and sustains itself is no easy challenge. And I will tell you, right now, more than any other time in history, human history, it's easier to find the resources and help you need to start a small business and to market it. Long gone are the days where three or four TV channels or a few local radio stations held the monopoly on advertising. Now with just a smartphone, you can get your message out in front of millions of people, millions of potential customers in the U US and worldwide for that matter. What a time to be alive. Potential earnings for a small business owner, the sky's kind of the limit. Number two, skilled trades. The average cost of a bachelor's degree in the US is about $127,000. And it usually takes at least four years to complete, 4.5 in my case. The average cost of a trade school degree is about $33,000 and takes two years to complete. If you went to trade school instead of college, you'd be working at least two years sooner and have less than a quarter of the student debt loan. Okay. But what actually is a trade? You got mechanics, welders, carpenters, construction managers, aircraft me mechanics, crane operators. The list is almost endless. Many of these jobs are outside and let guys and gals use tools and drive big trucks and heavy equipment. And who doesn't love that? The top end earners in many of these roles can be pretty high, even more than $100,000 a year. As the average age of current tradesmen and women goes up and this aging workforce starts to retire, there's a high demand for new skilled workers to jump in on these careers. And they are mobile as well. If you decide to move across the country, you can probably pretty easily find a job with your trade degree and experience. The earning potential is pretty darn good. And the number one hard job that you'll love is a catastrophe claims adjuster. This one is near and dear to my heart. You see, I've been a cat property adjuster since 1999. Well, what the flip is that? When major natural catastrophes hit, and some man-made ones as well, like oil spills, insurance companies will subcontract skilled, licensed field adjusters to assess damage to people's homes and businesses, analyze policy coverages, write restoration estimates, and negotiate with contractors and walk the insured through the process from start to finish. There's a customer service job is on top of all of that. Some of the natural catastrophes that I personally worked in my career include Hurricane Ivan, Jean, Katrina, Ike, Sandy, and Hurricane Irma. The Cedar Fire near San Diego in 2003, which did $2.3 billion in damage, and the Waldo Canyon Fire in 2012, as well as several much smaller wildfires in the Northwest. And hail and windstorms without count 
during the spring and summer storm seasons in the Great Plains. We are independent adjusters, and that means that we have to pay all of our own expenses like hotel, laptop, ladder, and vehicle. However, we also get paid for each claim we close and turn in based on a sliding scale. And generally the more damage and the higher the estimate that we write for the insured, the higher the paycheck we get for that claim. We work through what is basically a temporary staffing company known as, a, known as an independent adjusting firm. And we can make anywhere from $150 up to a few thousand dollars per claim. And again, this depends on the size of the claim and the fee structure. And the best adjusters can close six to 10 claims in one day and potentially handle more than 500 claims in a season. I'll let you do the math. The best part is that we mostly work from about March or April through October and we have the rest of the year off because that's the main storm season. Unless there's a major hurricane or earthquake and then adjusters can be working those events for many months or in a lot of cases, more than a year or even two years. It is great money. We get to travel all over the country and we get to help people in times of major catastrophe and crisis. Many times we're the first people through National Guard checkpoints to survey damage from major hurricanes or fires. It's exciting work with outstanding income potential. One of the best things about it for me is that because I'm not getting paid by the hour, but by the closed claim, I have a very strong incentive to close as many high quality claims per day as possible. And the key here is high quality. If I just try to be super fast and close a lot of claims to try and make a bunch of money, I'm going to get sent home if those claims are sloppy, incorrect, and if I don't exercise the highest possible customer service that I can. The earning potential is very high and there's no college required. Question of the day. Are you interested in more information about independent adjusting? Then head on over to adjustertv.com slash start to see if this is right for you and how to get started. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about. If it's right for you, how to build a rewarding career in claims. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, adjustertv.com. If you like this video, you can help us create more videos just like this by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.